All right, this is another banjo building video. Um, today I'm going to go over with you banjo layout and custom scale lengths. It's very easy to do any length of scale. Um, Stuart McDonald's got a great fretboard calculator and it makes it very easy to do any kind of custom scale length. Um, I do my scale lengths off of a standard. This comes out of the Scruggs book. This is my standard template, but it's not gospel. So I just I can cut it off anywhere, make any length of scale that I want. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so here we are. This is how I lay out most of my banjos with a framing square. And out here at the end is where I want my nut to be. So I wanted a 24 and a half inch scale length. I have to accommodate a uh, half inch of material needs to be removed from the pot to accommodate the neck. Now, that's it. So we laid that out and this is a plywood neck. This is experimental. It's not for sale. That's why I got all those plies. This is cherry and ash plywood. And I found where I'm going to have my nut offset it probably three sixteenths and then a for my peg heads I like them at a 20 degree slope down so that's it and my truss rods I put a truss rod in them and since I'm doing a kind of an off scale length this is I wish they made these truss rods in one inch increments because this one right here is too short and this guy right here is way too long so I'm going to take this guy, cut him off at the end, re-weld him back together, and put him in. So we're going to go out to the shop and we're going to install the truss rod and we're going to put the fretboard on. Now my fretboard, I measured it out, measured my scale length out. What was important was on this scale length where the nut is and the fist string is. That's the only thing I cared about. So I accommodated for the new nut and fist string position and I marked it out on this nice piece of maple and see at the fist string that grain's going to flow with it and end out the neck. So this is a lot of fun. That's why I like building things. You get to make something really pretty and that's it and that's one of my arm guards. That's out of burl. Those are hard to come by. Okay, so we got our neck on the mill. We've got a 20 degree angle for our peg head cut. And now I'm just gonna cut the slot for our truss rod to be placed into. But that's pretty wild looking wood, isn't it? It's a piece of plywood. So, new stuff to me. Um, I'm excited about it. So, our truss rod, we like I said, we cu I cut this down and got it welded back together with old Sparky the Arky, and it, that's what I wanted. So I don't know how long that is. Oh, probably 16 inch middle ground. Yeah, 16 inch truss rod. That's what I needed. So it's all welded back together, and I'm in the middle of the track for it. We'll put the fretboard on, glue it, and we'll put the peg head on, glue it, and it'll be done. Okay, so we milled out our track for our truss rod on the mill. And that's just how I like to fit them. Fit nice and tight, and they are just flush with the surface. So they're a nice tight fit when that fretboard glues on. And I leave myself room here, because I'm gonna have to cut this heel off. So I don't, I always give myself room to do things. So we're gonna put our fretboard on over this, centered, best as we can. And then we'll, my nuts, I make them out of bearing grade bronze. I don't make them out of brass. Brass is a whole different animal. This is a whole different animal. This is tougher and harder than a whore's heart. So it won't wear out on you. And we're going to machine that. We'll make a nut and then we're going to put our peg head on. So I'm going to glue fretboard and the peg head on and call it a night. Okay. 
Got our fretboard and our peg head glued up in there. Our peg head's out by the two clamps. The fretboard's clamped in the big vise. And tomorrow we'll pop it out and see what we got. All right, so I came out shop this morning, got this out of the clamp, and I was all excited to get this going again. And uh, we had a little D-lamb. There was a place I couldn't see it. It's right here. That fretboard wasn't down as tight as I like to the neck. So ain't no fixing it. I had a peeler all the way off. It's like ripping a Band-Aid off. The quicker we get it off and start fixing it, easier it's gonna be so we pull this truss rod out I got another piece of maple over there I'm gonna cut a fretboard out of get the dust collector going here and uh, you know I make mistakes so and if you ever get into stuff like this you're gonna make mistakes too but there's a lot of stuff that has to go right here and there's a lot of stuff that has gone right this plywood laminate that all had to go right this fretboard this figured piece of wood had to dry without cracking and that went right. That glue up fine. So we're winning, you know, and I'm not going to let this little setback fucking kick me in the nuts too hard, but it is a kick in the nuts and we lost the fretboard, but I make mistakes and I went up to them and, uh, you know, it's not bad. So, uh, we'll get the, uh, new fretboard made and glued on here but uh god you ever been around somebody that doesn't make mistakes they're kind of miserable aren't they but i'm not that type of guy so we're gonna fix this and uh make a good day of it all right so we're back i got the new fretboard cut out at a nice piece of maple once again and i got the grain kind of flowing just how we had the last one so when that fist string drops out the this kind of matches so the only critical measurement we have is where that fist string pops in and I got the fret calculator right here and it shows the fifth fret for the fifth string is 6.146 and that's where we got to cut her off for our custom fretboard length and that's it easy to fix like it never happened okay so our fretboards cut out and uh, I got little tack nails holding her in place just right where I want it over that truss rod. Um, if you haven't glued up a fretboard yet or for people that haven't done that type of gluing, uh, they'll, they'll kind of float on you and they'll hydraulically skate away from where they want to be. So yeah, these little tack nails uh, placed all around it, keep it in place while I'm clamping it. I'm going to use a more traditional gluing technique this time. I'm just putting a piece of soft cherry over it and just C clamps. I know what happened with my mistake last time. And uh, the shaper vise clamps up square. And the bottom of this looks square, but it's not. So it was putting more force right here. And over here, it was barely clamping. Couldn't have seen I didn't see it. So I'm not going to make that mistake again. We're going to clamp it with a bunch of C-clamps, and it'll pinch it down tight. And that's it. We'll come back and we'll start shaping this thing. Okay, we're back from the glue up, and we saved our ass. We've got a fretboard on here, and it's stuck good and proper. It's on there nice. So, we're going to take this thing, clamp it in the vise at a 3 degree angle. We're going to take our friend here, the three quarter inch cutter, and we're going to kiss along these edges and cut the part out that's going to seat against our pot here. You know, a three degree angle, and I cut in, I always draw my fretboards large, and I'll just kiss the edges of them, and that'll line it up. And plus, I kind of like a wider fretboard by about an eighth. So, this one's for me or if somebody gives me a hell of an offer. But, so, yeah. So we're gonna bring this unmill in here, and we're gonna step mill it down, and I'm gonna mill in about two inches and get myself a nice place for that neck to seat in. And you guys will get to see that. All right, this is the setup for cutting the neck. 
heel. So that's at zero, that's my quill. I always zero these off my quill because I don't know where the table's at and I don't know where that vice is at. So that is three degrees on the money. So what do we need? And that's what we're gonna do. Take ten thousandths off this whole thing as a finished pass, and that's it. That's as good as she's gonna get. Better than a saw. Now we're gonna do the sides. We'll bring the mill back up. A half inch in. We're gonna climb mill this so we don't get any chip out. Just watching as I go, you guys can't see this, but giving her the old eyeball. Alright, that's going to suit my fancy. I'll lock my Y. See how we have that nice, clean cut?
We're going to take a hair for our finish pass. About three foul. Let's give that a nice graze. There she is. Square as can be. For the back side, we have to cut opposite of the way we just cut now. Because we have to climb mill this. It's important. So that's what it is. You guys aren't going to be able to see the back side, so I'm going to get the camera out of my way so I can cut the back side. Alright, so we got off the mill. We've got our neck nicely milled, nice and squared, our three degree angle for us. And we've got to slot the pot for that. So it's uh, right there. One inch, 872 thou. Our cutter we're going to use is three quarters, so minus 0.75. It's going to give us one inch, 122 thou. Divide that by two is 0.561. That is what we're going to use on each side. And that's it. That'll cut our slot for us. So I'm going to come back. I'm not going to show that. There's no good way to mount the camera on this. So I will show you the fixture. It's handy. That it holds that pot nice and square. It's our bullseye center. And just a 90 degree fixture plate. And that makes quick work of that right now. Okay. So we have our pot off the mill and our neck off the mill and it fits tight in there which is good so we have that it's all hooked up it doesn't have any fasteners or anything in it yet but we check we do double checks i check everything multiple times i wanted a 24 inch scale length and at 24 inches that's right where i want my bridge so i'm happy and we're going to continue forward so the last thing i have to do you see how this is square in where that tone rings and the tension hoops got to go in. So I have a special cutter for this. I take my tension hoop and I'll score a line in here and uh, I'll mark a line on how deep I have to go and I'll get it knocked out on the bridge port and you guys are going to see that step next. Okay. So we're back at the mill. Now, I'm going to take this cutter here and I'm going to remove about 90% of this material that needs to go away. Now we have to put that shallow arc in it. And I have a special cutter for that and I'll show you guys how it's done. So we're going to remove most of it and we'll come back with a special cutter. Alright, so this is the homemade Widowmaker cutter. and. Uh, so we removed most of this material in there with the end mill and all we do is fire this up on back gear granny low and uh, sand her in. So even on her lowest speed, the surface feet per second on that is screaming. So I just have a little bit of sandpaper stuck to here and it just sands it right in and that's it. Simple. Okay, so we got our peg head marked out. It's all sanded in. It's beautiful. And we've got the back end of her. Fits in the banjo, fits in the pot nice. And now I am leaving it square because it's easy to handle right now versus an organic shape. And I'm going to put in Mother of Pearl inlay in and engrave it. And, uh, that is some tough stuff. That is, that is there, and I use it backlit, and that's it.
you guys be jealous who taught me mother of pearl engraving anyway. I got introduced to it through Doug Unger. Of all people, I met him. So, yeah. And uh, he is my mother of pearl engraving mentor. Wish me luck.